Right, hello guys. Yes, welcome to another video. I'm um, joining me at my desk, and today we're going to go through how I grade in Final Cut Pro. Um, yeah, so I had a few questions um, and comments on my Instagram and YouTube saying, you know, how, how do I grade my videos, um, my clips and all stuff like that, and, and how you do it in uh, Final Cut Pro. So, now a good thing to point is I do it all in Final Cut Pro. I don't use any plugins or LUTs, okay? So this is all in Final Cut Pro, all in the software. Um, everything's in there that I need to edit with. So it's only been recently that Final Cut Pro has added curves um, and a few other things, um, which is really, really handy actually. So it's basically kind of the same as Lightroom as you'd get in the tone curves and stuff. They've added curves in, in Final Cut Pro, which is really, really cool. Um, I don't know how long it's been out because I used to work um, with uh, Color Finale. I used to use that, which is pretty good uh, for a while, but my thing hasn't renewed and it was a bit glitchy anyway using with Final Cut Pro. Um, so now everything in here is what I need, so I don't need any plugins, don't need any LUTs. I don't need to download or kind of import anything into Final Cut Pro while grading. So we're going to start the screen recorder, dip into Final Cut Pro, I'm going to show you how I grade a few clips um, in my timeline. Right, so we're in Final Cut Pro now. Um, when I start editing, I like to choose kind of a primary clip um, to start the base edit on. And then from there, I'll copy that edit and then paste it onto the next one. All the rest of the clips in my timeline, okay? So all these shots were, were done kind of sunset time, well, just before sunset actually, evening light. Um, so, you know, kind of in the garden hour. So we've got to try and maintain the highlights and not blow them out, you know, to get the sky nice. And then we've got to maintain the shadows. Now it's quite hard to do through camera because you're either exposed for the, for the sky or exposed for your subject. Um, right now it's looking quite good because it wasn't actually, you know, when the sun was setting, um, it was right before that. So it's kind of really nice night light we're working with here. So I'm going to choose this clip to be the, the primary clip I'm going to edit because, you know, even though it's a little bit overexposed, I tend to choose them because I can correct it perfectly and I know that's done, that's, you know, I don't have to worry about it. Um, and then paste the clip onto the others and then do minor adjustments. Normally, you know, obviously clips are all different to each other, so there will obviously be minor adjustments you need to make if, you know, you, you um, edit one which is underexposed and you put that one on a clip which is overexposed, it'll be different and you have to make little adjustments there. But anyway, I'm going to choose the clip. This is the primary clip we're going to edit. So top right corner, um, you see your, your normal things here that you get on, on Final Cut Pro. But now we have this triangle button here, the green, red and, and blue triangle button. So what you're working with is color, saturation and exposure. Now, some people will dive straight into exposure and, and correct the exposure here. But what I like to do is go here, add correction, so you've got color board, color wheels, and color curves, right? And huge saturation curves. So this is really cool. I go into curves straight away. Normally people do this after. I've seen people do this after, but I do it first, because I like, I'm so used to Lightroom. This is basically the same as Lightroom with all the tone curves and everything. It's exactly the same in, in Final Cut Pro with curves and, and Photoshop and Premiere and so forth. Um, because I'm so used to editing curves, I'm in Lightroom, I go straight in here and do the curves, okay? So as a general rule, if you know, if you're used to editing curves on photos, you'd create two or three points and kind of make an S curve out of that, okay? So the low end is going to be the blacks, midpoint is the midtones, and highlights is up here. So what I like to do, as this image doesn't look, it's looking a bit flat at the moment, go ahead and pull down the blacks here to get some contrast. Push up the point here at the end, the black curve, the black point, sorry, um, to get fade in there. Push this up a little bit. And now up here, we can do highlights. We can pull it down to maintain more detail up there, okay? So, we've already added some mood just by doing those few points. It is looking a bit washed out. So what we can do is go back to the color board. Now, I tend to switch between these quite a lot. Um, kind of the curves being my main kind of edit. And then here I'll adjust accordingly to, you know, if, if the curves aren't giving you enough um, adjustments there, you can come here and add a few more if you want. Um, exposure looking good. Saturation, now we don't really need to do anything here. We could boost it a little bit, maybe five, six percent. Um, but as I've shot in just normal camera mode, um, the saturation looks okay. Now if I'm shooting in Log or Cine 4 or anything like that, um, you're going to get a flat image through um, your camera and then import to Final Cut Pro is going to be a flat image, uh, which is better for grading. But this, these clips were shot just through camera. Um, but if you're, if you are shooting S-Log, Log or anything like that, 
um, Cine 4, you do need to up the saturation quite a bit because it's going to give you a flat laid image. So, saturation is okay, don't really touch that. I tend to do all the colouring in this, which is the colour board, or we do it in the RGB tone curves, okay? So, master is going to be kind of the overall thing, so if you kind of want to boost the temperature warm or cool, you use this tab. So, master, as we want warm for this one, would go over and kind of select 35 to 40 or 50 maybe um, to get the orange tones in and then we'll push up slightly as you can see it's warming and cooling there at around 40 degrees do about five percent now in the shadows i like to bring it over to 230 which is blue and then push up to get the blue in the shadows there so you kind of you know like that kind of orange and teal look um, highlights if still you want more in the highlights we can push up around 50, 50 degrees, and push up there. You see, as it's changing the highlights, 10%. Midtones don't really need to mess with them. I like to keep them the same. Um, push up the shadows just a bit. There we go. That's nice. So you can see, just just with a few clicks, we've you know changed the image quite a bit. So we've got the nice warm kind of yellow in the highlights, and then we've got the deep blue shadows. Okay. That's pretty much it for that. And now I'll go back to curves, curves here. Um, and underneath you have red, green, and blue. So this is the RGB curves, okay? So I tend to go for the kind of golden look. Um, it's what I like to do when editing video clips or, or even photos on, it, on, on Lightroom um, to be posted on Instagram or whatever. So to get the golden look, so you do exactly the same as the curve up here. You put your points in, pull down on the contrast on the blacks, so when you're changing this point, it will change the photo dramatically. Now don't worry about that because we've got green and blue here to compensate the red curve, okay? So we're gonna do the same points on every single curve here, okay? On the red, green, and blue. Midtones, back up. So the white balance is corrected. Same on the green, pull down. You get purple, push up. This is where you get the gold in the highlights. And then the blue is gonna compensate the whole thing, okay? It's gonna correct the whole image. Pull down and push up, okay? And you can go, you know, and edit these how you like and fiddle with them, kind of what kind of level you want. You know, to get the right balance there. I'm gonna go back to color board and push more blue. There you go. So now we've got that kind of orange and teal look going on. Um, very simple to do. Um, and then you've got the gold in the highlights as well with the green here. And you can go further and put another point if you want and just make it more exaggerate. Same with each one. Cool, and then toggle on and off. You see, done a lot with the skin tones, a lot with the backgrounds, and so forth. And it changes the photo quite, quite dramatically. So, another thing I like to use um, is hue, saturation, and curves. Now this is a really cool thing. This is basically, what you get in Lightroom, you have hue, saturation, and luminance. Um, in a hue, if you toggle on different tabs, you can change the red hue, the orange hue, the, the blue hue, and, and so on and so forth, okay? So with the hues, um, if you don't know where the kind of color is, because um, you can make points manually here, um, but if you actually don't know which color to pinpoint perfectly, you can use a little stick here, go over to wherever you want to change the color, and it will change it for you. So you'll put a point here, so it's in between yellow and kind of magenta and pink, okay? So that's the point which would change where you've just marked on here. So change the hue, go up and down, okay? So we're obviously not gonna do this because the skin tone is looking all right at the moment. We don't wanna make it look like the Grinch. Um, but I'm just showing you what it does. So the hue saturation works the same. Um, at the moment, her, her skin tones, the orange is looking a little bit too much. So I'm gonna select the stick over here with hue saturation. It's gonna change the saturation of the hues, okay? So click where you want to click. We'll change the color up. It's gonna make it more orange down as we can desaturate. It's just all about knowing to find that good balance that you want there. Luminance is the overall kind of brightness of the color. So we'll select again with the luminance stick in the same kind of area. It's done the same, so up or down. If we go down, it's gonna add more kind of saturation, but make it look more tan. So we'll do that and then we'll go up here and lower the saturation a little bit more. Cool. I mean, that's pretty much this, as far as I can go with that. Um, when I'm editing, as you can see, we can go back here and click the effects tab 
toggle on off and that's what we've achieved so kind of moody nice deep blue shadows we've kind of boosted our skin tones a bit got that orange and teal look going on um and that's kind of my go-to orange and teal look kind of well it's orange and teal or like golden look i try to achieve in my um grading i mean there's a lot of things to do you can, we can go back to color board and we can get really eccentric we think we can go you know that vintage look with the highlights around 200 in the highlights 200 degrees and over the shadows we can go to red and we can get that kind of vintage look okay bring the master down a bit and there we can get you know just some cool effects and it works really really well i mean there's no clipping i mean it's good software yeah and that's all basically you need just curves hue saturation luminance and then you basically basically cover the grading now if you have not noticed or you have noticed this thing on the left hand side here um this is the luma kind of workspace okay so in the image it's going to tell you if you're overexposed or underexposed or what what's go what data is kind of going on in the image okay so at the moment as you see the line of the highlights here is under 100. the basic rule is just to be around 100 under 100 and the shadows is to be on zero okay so we're looking pretty pretty good on a, on a workspace um, perspective in the Luma tab. As it's a sunset image, I want to be under 100 because you want to maintain kind of the details in the highlights there. Um, we don't want to blow out the highlights too much when you're shooting um, in this you know time of day. And in the shadows, don't bring it below kind of zero, obviously because of clipping and stuff like that. Also in the highlights is clipping. Um, if you go over 100. Now, if I go over here to the exposure and select highlights, watch the left-hand side. When that goes up, and you see how it's making that straight line when it goes over 100, like 100 and 110 there. When it does that, that means your data is being lost in the highlights there. So you you won't maintain, you won't maintain any detail. So I'm just going to go back and put my normal kind of where was I? So highlights was 50, and shadows was blue. 230s around the blue. Push it. What was I about 18%? Um, go back to hue, saturation, curves. We're just going to bring this orange tab down and see what it does. That's a lot better, yeah. Do that. Cool. Toggle off the effects. Now, to copy the, the edit and post it on another it's very simple. Copy. Yeah. Select the other clip. And then you would go to edit paste attributes okay so bring up this tab um, you don't want the volume on there if you're just doing for grading so as you can see effects color curves um, I actually put this one I don't know why that's there that's, that's nothing I accidentally clicked it color curves one color curve board one and hue saturation curve so paste it on this it will now put the grade on this here so there we go I would say maybe this is a bit too blue in the um, shadows there. So what I can do, go back to color board, blue, bring it down a tab, and now we're kind of back to normal white balance. Um, and it kind of matches the first one as well. So yeah, very simple. That's just basically what I do um, when, in, when in Final Cut Pro. Very, very simple. I mean, there's a lot more you can dive into with kind of masking shape masks and stuff like that to kind of edit a, a certain point in the image and then you use the keyframes to kind of put it along all that kind of stuff but this is kind of basic what I do I don't go into that much detail when with grading it's very simple um, always keep the kind of uh, golden look to my photos or go to that vintage look um, you know whatever I might feeling on the day of grading but yeah that's kind of my thing very simple guys but yeah hope you um, Enjoy the little insight of how I grade it. I know some of you guys wanted to know how I do it. Um, that is how. Cool. I'll play the clip after this so you can see um, the whole thing in action. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.